Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about how you could potentially utilise overseas tax planning as part of your wider tax plan and potentially save yourself a lot of tax in the meantime. We're not talking small figures here, we're not talking £10, £100, we're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds, if not millions, over your lifetime. So, I'm sure you want to get straight to it. Well, the first thing to run through here is tax and how it works based on your residency. So, income tax, capital gains tax, for the most part, you pay those taxes in the country you are resident. So here, if you were to live in the UK, you would pay tax in the UK on any income and gains that arise anywhere in the world. The only exception for this might be is if you're a non-dom, non-domiciliary, and you can claim the remittance basis. We're not gonna run into that on this video, but basically, if you're not UK domicile and you've come to the UK, look at to see whether the non-DOM basis is applicable because in that case, you, only your UK income and gains would be taxable if you were to claim it and you could keep your overseas gains overseas as long as you don't remit them to the UK. So that's a little bit complicated for this video, we're gonna keep it simple. But broadly, no matter where you are, so as long as you're a UK resident, no matter what gains arise in the world, if they belong to you personally, you're going to pay tax on them in the UK. You could have bonds, dividends coming from overseas company, What's going to happen is they're all going to get put on your self-assessment tax return as a UK taxpayer and you're going to pay tax on your worldwide income and gains. So that's okay so far, but this is where you can kind of plan ahead. So if you've got a UK limited company, you're building up wealth, what you could do is take dividends over the years whilst you're living in the UK, but for a lot of people they want to move overseas, they want to retire overseas, they want a place in the sun. And certainly, by the time you finish this video and you've seen how the tax savings might even pay for that, you probably will want a place in the sun, I guarantee it. But what you could do is, if you've got a trading business, or you've got some kind of vehicle where you're building up well for wrapper, so you say for the best, the best case for this is where you've got a business, you're an entrepreneur, you've got a limited company, you're building up wealth. So over time, that, might, that company's gonna get money in it, it's gonna get sales, it's gonna build up those retained earnings, they're gonna, over time, increase and increase and increase. Obviously you, as a director, as a shareholder, you only wanna pull so much money out because every year you're getting handed a massive tax bill from your account and thinking, wow, you know, how am I gonna pay this? Can I afford to pay this? Let's only take a certain amount out because the more I take out, the more in taxes I'm paying. Absolutely right, I do the same thing as well. You look at it and you're thinking, you've got to balance it out. So what you do is you keep money in the company to reinvest to build up. Whether it's in the same company to reinvest in R&D and further products, go buy businesses, or if you put it into property or some other kind of envelope in another limited company or something like that to build your asset base up without you owning it personally. It's all under that corporate ownership structure, which is removing you from having that tax charge. So it's very important there. You don't want to pull it all out personally and pay income tax on that money from the company because then you're gonna have less money to invest and everyone knows the compound effect of how it builds up. You wanna have that corporate wrapper in place so you can invest as much money with paying the least amount of tax. So fast forward 10, 20 years, you've built it up, you've got a couple of limited companies, you've got a property company, you've still got your trading company which is now very successful, you're making one, two million pound a year profit, it's got a couple of million quid cash in a bank. What can you do with it? Of course, if you lived in the UK, still you're still a UK resident, you would pay tax on that. So what you might be looking to do is move to a tax-free country. You might want to retire overseas, go to Dubai, some other country where you've got 0% tax as a resident on income and worldwide gains. Now, this is a fantastic idea. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna move overseas, become a resident there, you're gonna completely cut ties with the UK, and then you can draw your money out. So just because it's a UK company, you can pay dividends to overseas shareholders and then because you're non-resident that dividend is going to be taxed in the country you're resident in which happens to be say Dubai where there's zero percent income tax you compare that to the UK where the maximum rate is 38.1 percent that's almost a 40,000 pound saving per hundred thousand pound of dividends so for people that have accumulated significant wealth the saving is tremendous of course there are rules that apply around this, especially when it comes to selling companies, there's a lot of anti-avoidance rules. Basically, the more anti-avoidance rules there are, the chances are that's where people have exploited this kind of planning in the past. So HMRC really put this anti-avoidance rules into place and try and stop it as much as possible. So there's a couple of the rules you need to be careful of here. The main one is where you're selling shares in a property-rich company. Even as a non-resident, where you're investing in UK property, 
from 2015 onwards, if you're selling a residential property, you will be liable to UK capital gains tax on that as a non-resident. And from 2019 onwards, if it's commercial property or any other type of property that's not residential. And the same also, so if you've got a limited company, with residential property in it, that basically anti avoidance treatment is leveled through to the company, so the company can't get that tax advantage either. There are another set of anti avoidance rules that you need to make sure you do not fall foul of. These ones are aimed at making sure that people, say for instance, you've got half a million pound, a million pound cash in your company bank account, and you wanna, you've got a great idea, you're gonna move overseas for a year, go on a nice, fantastic holiday, sail the world, take this million pound out whilst you're a non-resident, and then come back to the UK, not paid any tax, and you pulled the wool over the tax man's eyes. Well, in this case, there are some, there's some legislation, it's basically called the Temporary Non-Residence Rules. It catches a, a wide range of different income streams and gains. And the end result is, if you're caught by this, which most people are, especially taking dividends from your own limited company, it's a closed company, you can't come back to the UK and be resident for at least five tax years. It very slightly depending on kind of what year you leave and exactly where you leave during the year, but to play it safe, at least five complete tax years, you can't come back to the UK as a resident. Obviously, whether you're a resident or not, is a difficult question. You've got the kind of automatic overseas test, the statutory residency test, and it depends on how many ties you've got to the UK as to whether you're a UK resident or not, and how many days you're allowed in the UK before you are deemed to be resident by HMRC. So it can be very, very complicated in determining whether you're actually resident. So if you did, for instance, do this kind of tax planning where you basically materialised large gains and pulled out a large amount of cash from a limited company but then came back to the UK and stayed a couple of too many days, those gains and in income that you've avoided, although you realised them in a tax year earlier where you were non-resident, where HMRC were to deem you resident, they would look to tax you on them then. So it's very, very critical to make sure you are doing this kind of planning properly, you've got professional advice, and you've looked at the dates to make sure it's feasible. But this is how people do it. You see it all the time, Philip Green, people like that, being tax resident in very nice exotic countries with no tax. Monaco is a fantastic one. You know, they have these companies in the UK, Philip Green for instance, and then they pull out large dividends, I think it's 400 million pound he took, and paid no tax on it whatsoever, because it's in his wife's name in Monaco, or whichever country, whichever tax haven they were resident in. But this kind of tax planning isn't just for the big, rich and the famous, it can be utilised by real people with real businesses, people like myself and yourself. So if you've got a limited company, you're building up wealth for it, as long as you're building that into the company, you're keeping that in the company itself, retained earnings, later on down the line, you could potentially see that as a pension pot, some kind of retirement income, where you were to move overseas and you were to pull that money out tax efficiently. Obviously, there's so many different pieces to the puzzle, but this just goes to show you what is possible when you open your mind up and look at the different horizons that exist from this kind of tax planning and potentially consider removing to a nice sunny tax haven. But of course, this kind of tax planning isn't for everybody, so make sure you get real professional advice. So this is the kind of tax planning that your usual high street accountant probably can't help you with. You will need a detailed report and a proper advice from a chartered tax advisor, one of the bigger firms perhaps, depending on the size of your assets. Certainly if you've got hundreds of millions or tens of millions, you need to be going to somebody who can help you manage that efficiently, possibly looking at overseas trust structures and more. So there we have it guys, I hope you found this video useful. Did you know this? You know, a lot of people don't, aren't aware of this. So if you didn't, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, comment below what you thought of this video. If you're kind of enjoying the deviation from property tax, you want more of this international tax planning stuff that's more interesting and is gonna help you save even more money. Otherwise, that's all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed it and see you tomorrow. Bye for now.